It's the middle of June and my garlic scapes are ready to be harvested. These are the curly ends that come out of hard neck garlic that want to flower, but we want to take those off so that all the energy goes back into our bulbs. I probably let them go a few days too long, but we're going to cut all of these off and make some pesto and compound garlic butter, garlic scape butter with these. So I've got a sharp knife. Just take them off one at a time. There's one little guy right there that hasn't grown out enough for the flower bulb to shoot out. So I think he's the only guy I'm not going to cut today. I'll get him later, but I got everything else, I believe, all the scapes cut out of there. So now we just need to take our basket full of scapes inside with some herbs that I'm going to harvest out of the garden as well for our pesto. And I think for those herbs, I'll get some of this cilantro that is starting to bolt, and then we'll go check the tower, see if I have any basil ready in there. We'll get these. That should reinvigorate those two little cilantro plants. With this cold spring we've had, my basil is just way far behind, so I think I'll just take a couple of pinches. I don't want to stress these tiny little plants, so we're not going to have a whole lot of basil in here. We'll add it though, and I do have more cilantro in the tower. Let's find it. Here we go. We'll get some more cilantro out of here. supposed to be 99 degrees in two days so let's hope that a bunch of stuff doesn't suddenly bolt. I've got the herbs washed and that's the cilantro and the teeny bit of basil. I have I, I can't let a lemon go without taking the pith off with my or the peel off with my micrograder so I'm going to have some of that for both the compound butter and the scape pesto and I've halved the lemon to be able to get some juice and these scapes, especially the ones that were bigger in the back, um, I hadn't heard this before, but today I saw that the from the flower bulb to the end is kind of tough and to not use it in the pesto or the butter. So I'm going to cut these off and put them in my bag in the freezer where I put veggie and beef scraps or chicken scraps for making stock. So these lend some flavor to stock, but they may be too tough to eat. Possibly. I don't know that for sure, but we're just going to, why not? Because we need those, we need to use everything that we harvest. And if there's a use, it's probably stock for nothing else. So I'm going to cut these each scape after trimming the flower bulb and tips off for stock. I'm going to cut each scape coil into about half inch pieces before we put them in the food processor. Everything's rough chopped. I want about a half a cup of these scapes, which is about like that, and I'm saving some for my compound butter. I'm gonna throw all of this rough chopped cilantro and my couple of basil leaves that I had, stems and all for the cilantro. Those have lots of flavor in them as well. Let's use my real salt, my Redmond's real salt, about a half a teaspoon. That might be a little more, that's okay. We're going to 
get this blended. Now, I love this little Ninja processor. It's got a olive oil patch, or an oil hatch. I'm actually gonna use avocado oil, and we're going to, because I don't have any, um, I don't have any olive oil right now. Sam's is out, and I don't have an Azure Standard order yet. But we're gonna drizzle in while this is going about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup until it's smooth. Get in here with a spatula and scrape down the sides. Let's see what we've got here. I don't want it to be too watery, so I think I've got actually plenty of oil in here right now. You can kind of see that it's. Oh, I got suction cups on the bottom. I might have done too much oil, but we're going to add some other things to this. So. I might give it a quick process just to get it a little bit smoother. No more oil. Now I'm going to add in a half to one cup of Parmesan and blend it a little bit. This is the quantity is going to depend on how much I need to get it to thicken up a little bit more now. That might be... We'll see what that does. That's probably about a half a cup. Let's have a look and scrape down the sides. I'll have to blend it again because a lot of the cheese stuck to the sides. But that's got it. That's helping it thicken up pretty good. Let's give it another quick pulse or two. Good. I am going to, not all recipes use it, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze some lemon juice, fresh lemon juice in, and I'm going to add some of this, maybe not that much, some of this lemon peel, lemon rind that I used in the micrograter or grated in the micrograter. So let's give it maybe about, that was probably a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of lemon juice. One more quick pulse. And now I need to add either pine nuts or I'm going to do sunflower seeds. I don't have pine nuts and actually found out that I have a bit of a food sensitivity to pine nuts, a mild one. So, And I have sunflower kernels unsalted in the freezer, so we're going to add about a half a cup. That might be a quarter. That might be about a half a cup and a couple of pulses here just to chop them up Let's scrape the sides of the processor down now i think to me that's a little bit seems a little bit dry so i might drizzle in a little bit more oil just to make it a little less crumbly. Oh, 
Oh, I've got seeds up in the lid, so we'll make sure we get those scraped into the bowl. And I don't want to totally make meal out of the seeds and have it totally obliterated. I just want them to be chunky. What have I done here? So, a little bit more avocado oil. Let's see how that looks now. I think that's about right. That looks pretty good. So here we go. We have some garlic scape pesto with sunflower seeds, lemon juice, avocado oil, cilantro, and a little bit of basil. I'm going to put a small container in the fridge to use within a week, and then the rest of it I'm going to put in a jar or maybe even vacuum seal it to freeze. And that should keep six months or so. That's a great way to use garlic scapes. And for my fridge container, instead of dirtying something new and, or using up a jar, which I'm gonna need for canning, I'm just gonna use my Parmesan container that I just emptied. So um, maybe, I might do two servings of pasta for my son and I. So I think that's maybe a third of a cup that I'm gonna put in the fridge for use within the week. And then the rest, I made a food saver bag and I'm just gonna spoon it into here and vacuum seal it and put it flat, as flat as I can, in the freezer. Look at that, so pretty, pretty color and very tasty. I did check it to make sure it didn't need more salt and it was just fine how I had it. So this is gonna go real flat in the freezer just like this for six, up to six months from now. I'm not even gonna wash the container or the food processor from making the uh, pesto. There's not that much of the other ingredients in there plus our garlic scape compound butter is going to have similar ingredients just not the nuts and the oil really but it'll be fine to use this to chop oops i need to put the blade in to chop up the remaining quantity of garlic scapes i've got that's maybe a quarter or a third i might have two thirds ish of a cup here maybe three quarters of garlic scape chunks left over so we'll chop these up real quick. And I think that this size of chop is good for a compound butter because this will probably be put on top of steaks after they've been seared. So that's good. Let's get that into a bowl. And that actually kind of cleaned out the bowl of the food processor. The chopped scapes picked up a lot of the... sludge that was in there. Now, I'm going to add the leftover, the rest of the lemon peel. I'm gonna squeeze in the rest of this half a lemon that I didn't already use so that we have some fresh lemon juice in there and there's some pulp going in, that's okay. I'll save this for my vinegar jar. Oops, I just threw a seed somewhere, there it is. We'll do a little bit of salt, maybe that wasn't even really a half a teaspoon. And then I've got a cup of butter that has been softening while I was at work today. So we're gonna mix all of this together. Let me see if I can 
Lemon peel sometimes doesn't want to mix, it clumps up. So we'll see if I can get it distributed throughout this before we add the butter. And we'll, that'll help us get the salt mixed in as well. Two sticks of butter. I think I would be smart to get it started, otherwise we didn't really get a big enough bowl to mix in. I wasn't expecting the quantity to be this much. I think I had one stick of butter in my brain. Mixing this one stick in initially will help everything stick together, then you won't have pieces flying around everywhere. Now the other stick. Gonna have to grill a lot of steaks to use this up. This could be used in soups as well, or on Italian garlic bread, on toast. I'm sure we can find a use for it. It's all mixed up and I have torn off a piece of parchment paper and I'm gonna put all of this down uh, towards one end anyway. I'm fighting the curl as well, but get this compound butter put on the parchment paper and then we're going to roll it up and create a log. Couldn't waste much in my kitchen if you wanted to because you can't put anything down the sink with these old pipes where it gets stopped up. So I'm scraping as much as I can, otherwise it's just going to have to be wiped out of there and put in the garbage. So I'm going to try to get this formed into somewhat of a butter log to begin with before I start rolling. I might not have enough parchment, I might have to add to it. But if I can get it started, to where it's kind of even. Kind of just using the where that edge is. I've got it sort of rolled up, but now I'm just scraping along there to get it distributed a little more. And then keep it going here. Slide it, tuck it under there so it's good and tight and in a nice tube. And then you know, sort of Twist the ends I could have done this in two logs but what I'm gonna do is refrigerate this so that it's more solid and then I can create two logs from that to hold its shape I'm going to get some plastic wrap and that'll help hold it together a little better than just the parchment since I didn't really have a very long length of it or didn't go around very 
well. So we'll wrap this in plastic as well, just for this initial cooling to help it solidify. And then I can divide it up into however many logs I want, wrap it, get some, probably just store all of it in the freezer until I use it, want to use it and just bring out a little bit at a time. So we'll get this cooled so it's more solid. I've been outside weeding and watering and taking care of the garden for about three hours before bedtime here while this was in the freezer. So let's see how our garlic scape butter looks. That looks really good. Smells really good. Imagine that on a freshly seared or grilled steak. I think I'm going to freeze this into several different pieces. Maybe I might do it in thirds or so. Actually, I might do less than that. Just smaller chunks so that they can be individually wrapped and stay a little fresher. So let's get some plastic wrap. And I want to wrap each one of these really well. Just so it keeps them fresh, fresher. Roll it up and then fold the ends in towards the tail end and there's a nice chunk of garlic skate butter. Now we'll keep this in the freezer and just take out one of these at a time as we need them. That was really easy. Garlic skate butter for Man, this will last a long time. This is my beef stock freezer bag. So I just throw carrot, celery, onion, beef scraps, and I'm gonna put those scape blossom ends in here as well and throw the whole thing back in the freezer. And then when I have enough in here or I'm ready to make some beef stock, I will have, actually there's prime rib bones in there too, but this will have some garlic flavor from the garlic scape scraps. Mm -hmm.